Hey gang, it's Rich here on a Sunday evening. How are we doing? So, uh, for those who don't know me, my name's Rich. I'm a novice guitarist. Yes, novice. I have had 124 of them, by the way. So, yes, they're pretty, aren't they? So I've got lots of comparisons of one to another. And um, this gives me an idea, really, of what I think good value is for just the novice home player. So, title of this video. So in the last week or so, I have played in a shop some expensive guitars and I was interested to think to myself as a home player if you had the money to spend say a thousand pounds or maybe more on a uh, on a guitar to tinker around with should you so my current fave is my classic vibe 70s strap it's 300 pounds and here in, in the UK I've my most expensive guitar of late, it's about £600, so uh, PRS, SE models, various different ones, uh, Fender Player series, going back a few years, out of Gibson, um, expensive episode, Epiphone, so about £600. Now my experience of a £600 guitar to a £300 guitar, and again, it's just my opinion on being a home player and a novice, is the £600 guitar generally wasn't worth the extra money for me. Now the port, the PRS SEs may be the exception. They're about 525, 550, and they've all been excellent. But, you know, it's, do you get double the guitar for double your money? Hmm, not necessarily, not necessarily. You can have finished flaws and setup issues and various other things with a bit more expensive guitar. So not, not for sure, but if you're spending a thousand pounds, so I've tried a PRS SE Silver Sky, I've tried uh, an Ibanez AZ2204, an Ibanez RG Prestige. Now the, the AZ is £1,100, the Prestige was £1,600. So uh, what else did I try recently? Oh yeah, I tried Paul's guitar, which is nearly £900, and the PRS SE um, hollow body with the two cutaways in it, which is £1,000. So there I am thinking, is this £1,000 guitar that much better than some other ones. Now on the Ibanez, the, which is a premium, the AZ is a premium model, they have rolled fingerboard edges, which are really nice. It might have, um, a roasted maple neck, sorry, get, put your teeth in rich. Roasted maple neck, that was great. Seymour Duncan pickup sounded amazing. They have funky switching detail, locking tuners on the back. Uh, what else did it have? Hasn't got stainless steel frets. And some of the goodies and it felt great to play i had it on my lap and the pickups felt sounded brilliant and you know i'm like oh this is 1100 pound guitar but then i was thinking actually let's have a little think about a harley benton fusion for a second because there's one currently on ebay which i may well buy and it's a fusion three and okay so you can't expect the finish and the materials to be exactly like for like but it's got a roasted maple neck it does have stainless steel frets it's got locking tuners. No, they're not Goto's. Fair enough. It's got locking tuners. Uh, it's got a decent. It's got a two-point trim, a Wilkinson one. It's got HSH pickups. Roswell versus Seymour Duncan, obviously a non-contest. But you know, on paper, they both do similar things with similar types of features on them. Yeah, one brand new is about four hundred pounds. The one on eBay is actually two hundred. And one is £1,100. So that was that. And then whilst I was having a go with the PRS SE Silver Sky, which is a kind of, well, it's funny, isn't it? And someone else who's had one, please let me know. But if, when you play, when you look at it, you think, oh, it's like a strap. When you pick it up, it felt nothing like a strap to me. Obviously, it's very different with the headstock on a PRS anyway. The tuning pegs, plastic, felt awful. The neck felt nothing, nothing, oh, bing, felt nothing like a strap. It's 10 inch radius, but. Uh, uh, on those, but uh, is it a 10 inch radius? Seven and a half, isn't it? Was it eight? I've forgotten. Do you know what? I've forgotten. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Point is, neck felt nothing like the strap. The body, the, the finish, the plain finish, I hate to say it felt a bit cheap. The uh, three way switch felt all weird. The pickup sounded amazing, and the fit and finish on it felt also good, but 900 quid for one of those. I'm like, really? 900 quid did not feel like 900 pound guitar to me, that really didn't. That was very disappointing. And yeah, the, the other PRS's still felt good, 
But my overall takeaway, and I'll be interested to hear what other people think about this, it made me think, well, even if I had a thousand pounds to spend on a guitar as a novice, as a home player to go, oh, I've got a thousand pound guitar with all these nice things on it. I just don't think it feels worthwhile enough. I think there are just too many other guitars, especially if you go secondhand, I suppose, which is a bit cheating, but there are too many other guitars that have decent specs, decent enough specs, not to think that uplifting cost is worth it. Let's take Chapman, for example. I've had some Chapmans recently. So the MR1 Hybrid, which is currently selling uh, brand new for 350, I think they're about five or six when they first came out, which is probably a bit much, but get you no know, stainless steel frets, rolled fret ends, uh, rolled fingerboard, sorry, um, roasted maple neck, um, Chapman's proprietary pickups. And I guess pickups aren't uh, one of those things as well, aren't they? You either like them or you don't. So yes, you could say, well, my Seymour Duncans are just way better than the standard ones in my Squire. Well, for the home player, how are they better? Because most of it is in the sound, isn't it? Really is, okay, you've got the hum and feedback, which can be an issue on things, but generally it's just how they sound. So yeah, it made me, I was almost disappointed. I, well, especially with that 1600 quid uh, Ibanez Prestige I picked up, I wanted to be absolutely blown away, but I just wasn't really. And maybe some of that is because I've had so many guitars and even though I've not had loads of expensive ones, uh, I can't appreciate them as much anymore. <laughs> or just, I don't know. So there we go. If you're a novice, and or an intermediate tree even, an intermediate player, and you're playing at home, and you haven't got to worry about going out and gigging and, and having your guitar be that reliable, but, but you've got the cash and you think to yourself, oh, that'd be great to have that fancy guitar for a thousand quid. I just don't think it's worth doing. Anyway, I'll be interested to hear what you've uh, all got to say on it.